hey guys welcome back this is the lecture to recall the basics of action controller so far in this course project we practiced writing controller from scratch and generating resource controller from scaffold as well so let's recall the rails controller in this lecture so if you are a rails developer then controller is the most frequently term that you have to deal with a controller represents the C in the MVC architecture. So whenever you make a request from the browser, it first comes to the Rails router and then router determines that which controller has to serve this request. Once the router decides this, the appropriate controller performs the required operation and produces the output. In other words, you can say that controllers are the core of a web request in Rails. They are made up of one or more actions that are executed on a request and then either it renders a template or redirects to another action. An action is defined as a public method on the controller which will automatically be made accessible to the web servers through Rails routes. Okay. And we create multiple controllers in a Rails application and each controller has a dedicated view directory for it inside app views, which contains the views template for its action. Okay. For example, if we have a welcome controller in our application like this, then you must have a directory with name welcome in app views with the following templates index.html.erb, about us html.erb and context as html.erb. So here you can see that in the app views, I have a welcome directory with the name controller and this directory has three views which are about us.html.erb, contact us.html.erb and index.html.erb. And this directory contains the template for all the actions which are required in a controller. Okay. But uh, you need to notice here that you don't need template for all the actions. Sorry, I made the mistake initially. You don't need templates for all the actions. For example, if you have a post request and the request is submitting as a HTML, then you don't need to create template for post request. Why? Because it redirects you on a different action after performing its logic or its intended operation. Okay. So here in students controller, you can see that uh, so open the students controller in the admin so here you can see that we are at the create action now and after saving the students to the database we are not uh, rendering any template for create action instead we are redirecting the resource to the admin students path okay which is the show action of this controller and it is ultimately rendering the show action of admin students controller okay so what we can say that a controller is a normal Ruby class which consists of methods. Okay. And the public methods of this controller can be referred as action. Okay. And these actions must have templates for them to be rendered. And in the routes, these entries must be mapped to some routes. So you can see in the routes.rb that we have route here for welcome index index section of welcome controller is mapped as root base here and the about us and contact us has welcome about us and welcome contact us path here okay so if you don't have route mapped for that actions then it does not make sense to call the, those methods as action okay because controller actions only take place as a request when they have a proper routes mapping okay However, the way of defining these routes is just an example and you can define these routes in other way as well. Okay, here you need to notice one thing that not all the controller actions have a template for it even if they are mapped to some route. Okay, for example, you can consider the create action of a resource controller. Okay, this action does not have a view template for it to be rendered but it redirects on another controller action after performing the logic written into it. And one more thing that here you can see that we have a before action callback. Okay. That is for set student. Okay. So this is also defined inside the private section of this controller. And this is also not a valid controller action. You can just call this as a plain Ruby method. Okay. And here you can see that we have a formatted data. We defined this as a helper method. So we, you can use this method on the views as well, but this method is not called as action. Okay. Now let's discuss about the naming convention of uh, controllers and methods and action into a controller. 
since a controller is just like other ruby classes so it follows some common conventions to create a ruby class the first one is that your controller file name must be same as the controller class name okay for example if your controller name is welcome controller then you must save this file as welcome controller.rb so here you can see that my controller name is welcome controller and i saved this as welcome underscore controller.rb so you have to follow proper camel casing here the another convention is that if you are creating a resource controller then you should name your controller in plural form here you can see that we have a students controller where a student is a resource in our application so we saved this file as students controller and or you can say that we defined this student controller as students controller inside the admin name space okay so your resource controller should be plural however this is just a convention not strictly required okay now let's talk about how to define action and methods in your controller here i am using the term methods and controllers separately because not all methods defined into a controller are the actions as we discussed already that callbacks and filter methods defined into a controller are just plain ruby methods not the controller action similarly the helper method you can define into a controller but these cannot be referred as the controller action these are simple ruby methods okay and sometimes you uh, for example if your controller method action is getting too long and you are break down you are going to break, break down your logic into uh, some other multiple methods then you have to define those methods inside the private or protected area in your controller but not into the action so in that case those methods are also known as plain ruby methods not the controller actions okay you can only refer the methods as action if you have defined some routing for them and if they are publicly available okay but all public publicly available methods inside a controller are not referred as action okay unless you have routes defined for them okay so you need to keep two things in mind that your controller act if you want to call a method inside the controller as action then you have to publicly define it and then the other one is you have to map a routing for that otherwise you need to define your methods inside the public or protected area in your controller okay now it's time to discuss about the parameters so controller action can access the parameters sent by the request there are two kinds of parameters possible in a web application the first parameters are sent as part of the url these are called as query string parameters the query string is everything after question mark in the url let me show you here you can see that i am at the courses index page okay now if i have to pass query params in this uh, to the index section of the courses control then how i can do that that uh, add the question, uh, question mark after the courses and you can pass it like let's say it to equal to true okay now if when you submit refresh this page or when you submit this request you will see that a request is coming to the action controller sorry courses controller inside the admin name space with parameters active true okay so this is known as the query string parameter okay and the other type of parameter is usually referred as the post data this information usually comes from an html form which has been filled by the user it's called post data because it can only be sent as part of an http request and rails does not make any distinction between query string parameters and post parameters and both are available in the params hash in your controller okay now if you uh, for example let's see this here okay so here you can see that parameters active true okay and now when you submit the course form let's say submit it some data here and also submit some data here okay and now submit and create course okay so when you submitted this data you can see that there is again a params hash has been created so you can see that params hash okay so this is the hash now whatever is coming into this hash depends upon what are the query string you are passing or what the data you are submitting through the forms okay and we already see how to deal with params in a controller so you can refer that lecture from the bootcamp where we created our first controller from scratch and you can especially refer the create action of a student's controller okay now as the last thing from the con this controller uh, 
we need to know about render and redirect so rendering is just about displaying the output on browser using view templates by rendering them this happens in the get action and redirecting means after performing the intended operation and then redirect to another controller action to display the output on browser the redirect action must be a get action so that it will render the output let me show you how it works okay so here you can see that i am at the detail page of the courses now now if i refresh the browser you can see here that uh, parameter id4 okay and processed by the courses controller show action and you can see that rendered inside the layout is admin and what template is rendered here rendered admin courses show.html so this is called rendering okay now if you click on edit you can see that it is rendered by the edit.html.trb and in the form we already enter uh, rendered a template which is error.html so you can see that admin shared error.html and it is rendered also rendered the form partial as well okay now if i submit this uh, form update courses then you can see that it comes to the update action okay and now after updating it you can see that it is redirecting to the courses show page okay redirect to http localhost admin courses and here is the id of the course and you can verify this in the controller action as well open the courses controller inside the admin name space and here you can see that when you click on the update you can see that it is redirecting format when request is submitted as html it is redirecting you on the course detail page okay so this is called how to redirect on some other action here you need to keep one thing in mind that you can only use render or redirect into a controller once but not both okay i mean that you cannot use two renders or you cannot use render and redirect both in an action or you cannot use two redirects in a controller action okay in other words you cannot use multiple renders or redirect in a controller action if you do you will get an error of double render now last but not the least that what is application controller uh, because when we study uh, about the controllers we know we just got to know that how to create controllers how requests are coming to the controllers and how to deal with params and forms and all that we usually some students or some initial uh, freshers forget about the application controller and then they just stuck that what is application controller okay so an application controller in a rails application can be thought of as a parent controller from which all other controllers are inherited okay so here is the application controller okay by default only the application controller in a rails application inherit from action controller base all other controllers inherit from application controller this gives you one class to configure things such as request forgery protection and filtering of sensitive request parameters okay so if you want to perform some checks on all the controller actions so you can define that action or method inside the application controller and that will handle for you okay so you can consider this application controller as a parent controller for your application okay so that's all from this lecture and we that's how we recall this controller thing stuff that we practiced so far and i hope you enjoyed this content and this has recalled your basics of controller but before leaving from this lecture let's discuss few question about the controllers what is a rails controller how controller works in rails what are naming convention for a controller what is the difference between a controller method and a controller action okay and what is the difference between render and redirect is it possible to use multiple renders or redirect in a controller action no it is not possible what kind of controller actions does not require a view template okay how many types of parameters are available in a web application so we discussed that there are two types of parameters available that either form parameters or query parameters now and the next question is what is application controller in rails so that's it from this lecture i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching this and let's meet into another lecture till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe